everyone. It's me again, me Gail, and welcome to my channel if you're new, and uh, welcome back if you're a steadfast subscriber. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. It is Saturday the 18th of February. I worked this morning, and then I went to the store, and I picked up some things. Um, the better part of the grocery shopping was cat food and dog food. Pretty much my little fur babies. One little cat and one little dog. They have the brunt of the grocery list sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, I love them, so I'll keep feeding them. Uh, I got the cat over there in the Rocky right there. Karma. Rocky. And um, I got home, put the groceries away. It's quarter to four. So just figured I'd pop on and say hi. How's everybody's week going? How was your Valentine's? This was my second Valentine's in a row of being single. My choice. And what are you doing, Karma? Karma, no. Get down. You can't. You can't. Yes, you can. Come here. You want to be on the camera? Anyway, I scatterbrained today. But yeah, I came home, put this stuff away, and now I get to relax. My back is hurting. I don't know what it is. There's the cat. Hey, don't drink my stuff. Don't drink my stuff. I have a water with some water meal flavoring in it. But um, there she is. There she is. There's the karma. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. So, anyway, you get to hang out with me for a little bit right now. I Valentine's was on Tuesday. It was pretty quiet. Actually, I was home alone. I had met my daughter, took her dog, Daisy, met her after work so she could go to her boyfriend's. He was coming up on Wednesday and... She, they were celebrating his birthday, so she wanted to go, you know, do all the things to get the place ready. She had balloons, and she made brownies, and she had gifts, and she was excited to, you know, have things nice for him for his birthday. He he lives in Illinois and comes up. He has a place up here and down there, and so anyway, she was excited about that. So they were together Wednesday. They weren't together for Valentine's, but they got to hang out, and they're still hanging out now, and um. Yeah, it was pretty quiet. No, nothing, nothing to write home about, so to speak. And then I can't think of anything major. That's the thing. Like the, the weeks are pretty quiet. Like I work and then I'm not working and then I go back to work. I think y'all can relate to that. I mean, you know, couldn't wait for the weekend, but I had to work half a day today and I, I'm working half a day next Saturday. And I think I'm going to be working most of the Saturdays for a stretch now. We are finally getting our team back up to speed. Hopefully we have hired two more people for our team. And um, so once they're fully trained, uh, it'll stretch out the, the Saturdays, the weekends. It won't be as... And it's never that... For me, I had like 14 phone calls between 8 and noon. So it was <laughs> karma. She's just, la, 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 what are you doing on the screen there? But um, anyway, so it was pretty quiet. Talked to my manager, worked with her, and that was that was cool. So we chit-chatted. And then, um, but yeah, my back hurts. So I think I'm just going to kind of take it easy. I don't know if it was... I don't know what it, I don't know if it's like from sitting so many days in a row. I definitely need to be more proactive about exercising. At least I'm trying to get back into water. I bought some water flavorings because even though I don't dislike the, the flavor of water, like my water, I have spring water, so it's delicious. It's, it, you know, nice and cold. But in the wintertime, it's really hard for me to drink cold water. And, and actually I've seen a lot of articles about drinking hot water is supposed to be good for you, but that's a habit I'm having a hard time getting into also. So anyway, I try to get at least three of these in a day. It's 32 ounce and it's kind of cool. It's my, um, dolphin 
from when uh, I went with the ex to Florida, we went to the Dolphin Research Center. That was very cool. Um, loved that. And uh, bought this. Didn't realize when I bought it how much it actually cost. Which was, I mean, we were in the like the little gift shop, you know, at the research center, and everything goes towards the research, which I don't mind donating for. But like, I think, um, you know, vacation mode, you're not really like thinking about what you're spending for souvenirs and whatnot. And it was, when I looked at the bill after I bought it, I think it was like forty five bucks. And if you know me, like, that's a lot for me to spend on a glass, <laughs> or you know, it's got a it's got a top, and it keeps stuff really cold. It holds you know, ice for a long time, hot or cold. It does really good with that. And I actually, there was one dolphin on here. His name was Delta. And they have a picture of him. I don't know if you can see it, but he actually kind of followed me around because they had all these like ponds or whatever you want to call them. And they had little channels in between them. And of course, when you look at them, you can kind of like get used to like their markings, you know, like Delta's got the scar, he's got this marking or whatever. And I couldn't quite reach him to pet him, but it, it was like, no matter where I went to, to look, he, he kind of came along. So I'm like, Del Delta's my buddy at the, at the research center, but that was really cool. And I did, I've been trying to process things about the breakup and it was a year it was officially a year on february 11th i broke up with my now ex and i'm if you know me at all which a lot of you don't of course but i try to be positive i try to be op optimistic i try to um i really try to be better not bitter and i really try to be be above like petty feelings and whatnot, but I was really struggling there for a while and, and I'm more irritated with myself because he's already moved on and he's already in a relationship and he moved on. Like we broke up in February by July, he was in another relationship. And when it happened, like he made a point of letting me know in case I heard it from somebody else. And I really think, honestly, I wouldn't have heard it from anybody else. We were still friends on Facebook. I would have seen it on Facebook when he became Facebook official. But he was like, you know, he made a big point of like contacting me and letting me know that he's been seeing somebody. And that was, you know, like June. And I was like, oh, okay, I appreciate that. And then, and then, like I said, I, I found him on all these online dating sites and it really kind of turned my perspective of him and like who I thought he was because I would always say, you know, he's a good guy. And then I went through a phase where I was like, he's a good guy, but he really didn't want to put any effort in. And you know, like it was, if it wasn't easy, then he didn't want to do it. And then I've like recently thought, you know, right along, I, I did blame take responsibility, blame myself for certain parts of the relationship for it fizzling out. And that's basically what it did. I mean, we started out really good in the beginning, of course, in the honeymoon phase. And then we did, we did break up for like four and a half months in the middle there. And then we got back together, but we never really talked about like why we broke up. And it was kind of almost like when we broke up, it was like an accidental breakup. Like I, was wanting more from him. And he said that he couldn't give any more. So I took that, like we were done. And so like we broke up, it was, it was dumb because it was like all in text. And, um, and then we, I went through and, and there was like back and forth stuff. I was mad at him and then I, whatever. And then, and then I finally, I'm like, you know what? I just want to be friends. And then we started hanging out and then we weren't, and then he like, after we'd started hanging out before we got back together, cause we got back together, like the February beforehand, before I broke up, like this is 23, 22. I broke up with him in 21. We started talking again and got back together in February. 
so it was like February is this month. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Something about February. But um but I started really thinking about like I I don't I don't know about you guys, but like on Facebook there's all these like dating groups and, and coaching groups and you know how to how to attract a high value man and and how to be a you know a high value woman and you know the behavior of not chasing and the behavior of being in your feminine energy, which I, which I definitely, you know, think is a good thing to a point. However, because I've had to be in my masculine so much because I was a single mom and basically in survival mode, which is very much a masculine energy. That's where I gravitated to. I'm the caregiver. I'm the one who takes care of things. I'm the one who gets things done. You know, that was my, that's been my role in like most of the relationships that I've had. And I made the mistake of not letting him take care of me or do things to take care of me. Um, you know, like I, I started thinking about like when he, uh, we went shopping and he would offer to buy my stuff. And I think that was a bit of pride on my part because we were definitely in two different financial brackets. Like by, I'm by no means like rich at all. And he was very, I would say comfortable. So, I mean, so much so that like we went on two trips, we went to Florida and he pretty much covered all the expenses and we were there for like six days and we stayed in a really nice resort. Uh, hotel type place. It, it wasn't a resort as in like, it wasn't all things included. So like literally he was paying for food and drinks and all the things that weren't part of the thing. So that was fantastic. That trip to Florida. And then we went to Mexico and stayed in an all inclusive resort. And that was fantastic too. So it was, he was okay financially, you know, it wasn't like this was something he did all the time, but those were two things that we did both times we took his teenage son, the first time we took his teenage son and, and the son's best friend. And then the second time we took the teenage son and his girlfriend. And, um, that, so he's, it wasn't like he wasn't generous that, you know, I would never say that, but I wouldn't let him, like he would offer to buy stuff. Like I have my own list. I'm like, Oh, well, we're both here. I I'll get what I need for my house. You get what you need. And then he would offer to pay for it. And a lot of times I wouldn't let him pay for it. And, um, so that was kind of like not letting him care for me in a way that he could have. And then like when we, the, and the, the one time we walked out of the store, we were walking out of the store and it was raining and he offered to go get the vehicle and come up and pick me up. And I wouldn't let him do that. I, I'm like, no, I can, I can walk in the rain. It's no big deal. You know, I wasn't used to anybody doing that kind of stuff for me at all, offering to do that kind of stuff. And I was always the, the person that growing up, I can do anything you can do kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like I got this. I'm the, go to the grocery store and you got 10 bags. I'm carrying them all in at once. Cause I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to keep going back. I've gotten better with that. You know, like I don't kill myself to get everything in at one trip, but that was literally, you know, you were wrangling kids and whatever, and coming in the house with all the groceries. And, and so, and I mean, it, it does make an impression on you when you're a single parent and you're, you're working full time and you're trying to take care of the kids in the household and all the things, you know, check, I can check my oil and I can check the tires and I can, you know, fill up the, the radiator and the wiper, you know, container in the car and, and schedule the appointments for the car to get new tires or, you know, all the, the things. So I wouldn't let him do the things quite often. He would try to do them. And I think that was kind of, guys like to feel needed, I think, at least from everything I've seen on, you know, all the, the coaching and the things that they like to feel needed and they like to feel like they are your hero in at least some small measure. 
and I wasn't very good about letting that be. And I also would do 99% um, of the traveling, like, because he had, he still had um, a teenage son and he was pretty much the, the sole caregiver for him um, living in the household and the mom's not really product part of the situation a lot. Um, to make things easier on him, I wouldn't make him come stay with me at my house. And the longer that went on, the easier it was for me to just, I got really good at just packing to go to his house for the weekend. And at that time, my oldest was living with me, so they were here to take care of the animals. So I didn't have to worry about that. And um, I didn't make him drive to come visit. I didn't make him stay with me. And a couple times I invited him up. The idea was he was going to stay, but then he would like have such an anxiety attack about not being there in case his son needed him because he had just started driving and, and, uh, you know, and I understand, I mean, he was in a different place as far as still having, a, um, a young person who's still finding their way at home. My children are twice the age of his son. And, um, so yeah, they were doing their own things in their own lives other than my oldest was living with me, had moved in like halfway through when I was dating him, the the other guy. And, um, and then actually it was funny though. My oldest moved to Seattle the day before we went to Mexico in October of 21. So they started their new life out there. So then I was back to empty nesting again. And now my daughter has moved in. She moved in in October of this year. It's kind of funny. October's must be a thing too. I don't know. She'll probably, she'll probably move back out sometime in the spring or the summer. You know, it's just, you know, everybody needs support once in a while. God knows my parents helped me when I was going through my divorce and stuff like that. So I get it. You know, we all, and I'm happy to help my kids. That's, I mean, I think most of us as parents, if our parents helped us, it gives us a, a great pleasure to be able to help our children because it's kind of like that paying it forward, you know, but in the last couple of days, because the one year anniversary of breaking up and then Valentine's and I, I've sat there and I've tried to kind of like and maybe this is like, you got to keep doing this all the time. Like you have to, like forgiveness is never a once and done because you can forgive somebody and then somewhere down the line, you can get mad at them all over again for whatever it was you forgave them for. So it's kind of a continual, you have to keep forgiving somebody. You have to keep reminding yourself of the reason you forgave them in the first place so that that isn't them living rent free in your house or that, you know, it's like you drinking poison, expecting them to die. It's not you know, it's all the things, all the analogies. And I just started thinking about trying to be grateful for the experience. And of the, the vacations were wonderful and we got along great. Uh, we just kind of dissolved into basically drinking buddies. And I think a lot of that, I think a lot of that was looking back part of mine my fault because by not letting him take care of me in some small measure, the dynamics of the relationship, I was the one doing the driving and I was the one accommodating. So he, there was no challenge, I think, and that kind of fizzled. You know, I was always available. I was always willing to come down whenever he had a free time. I was like ready to be there. So it was kind of lopsided in that I think that killed the romance. So then it was basically, we hung out and we ate and we drank. We loved food and we loved alcohol. And, but for me, the alcohol had started taking kind of a toll on my emotional side because it was way more regular than it should have been. 
and like throughout the week, I would always be like, oh, I'm just going to drink on the weekends. And then it'd be a shitty Monday and I would get something and have it Monday. And then I'm celebrating Tuesday wasn't that bad. And then Wednesday, and then it's like, well, it's almost the weekend. So then you're like every night you're drinking. And, um, and then I'd, I'd quit drinking for a couple of weeks or I'd, whatever. And then I'd, you know, and then I'd be like, I really, I was drinking at home alone, which is never a good idea. Never. I don't think. And I would end up drinking and then I would end up like he would fall asleep when, when I'd stay at his house and I would end up, you know, when you're drinking, you like overthink everything and everything is more emotional. And I would end up like crying most of those nights because I would get caught up in this thought pattern. And towards the end of the relationship, I started acknowledging that I was a drinking buddy and there was no horizontal hanky panky or anything. And, you know, that was, we would sit beside each other and hold hands watching TV, but that was, and kiss every now and then, but there wasn't any, there wasn't any romance in the beginning. He gave me flowers and teddy bears and, you know, and bought me sugar free chocolates and, and that kind of thing. And that all kind of like fizzled away. And I think, and then when we went into new years of last year, it, something had definitely changed. Like I could, I, I could feel it in myself. I could feel it in him. There was a, like a, a strain going through new years because I had worked and I were at that time I worked in a very busy place at the, at the clinic, people coming and going all the time, a lot of stress. So by the end of the week, I was peopled out, like legitimately had no desire to socialize in a lot of, in a lot of cases. And I'm, I consider myself am, amnivert, amnivert because I am okay with people and I'm okay with socializing, but I have like a limit. And then when I'm done, I'm done. And I'm ready to just go home and be quiet and recharge my batteries. And we, I didn't want to go out for new year's, new year's in Northern Michigan. It was cold. It was snowy. There was some band playing outside someplace. And I'm like, that's miserable. I don't, I no, don't want to be, I can stay home at his place, of course, and we can drink and we can hang out and whatever. And, uh, I think he wanted to go out and because I was fine with not going out, he chose not to go out. But I think there was a part of him that wanted to. And so I kind of held him back from doing that. He said he didn't care, but you know, you kind of picked up a vibe that, you know, he was disappointed in his new year's and I'm kind of not a new year's kind of person. Like I don't want to go out and deal with the crazy people at new year's. I've been that way since I was a teenager. Like I've legit not wanted to go out and deal with large crowds of people drinking and you know, getting out of hand, that kind of thing. So I'm kind of a party pooper when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, and it was after new year's that, by the time that I broke up with him on the 11th of February, we had since the first of January, since I had left on new year's day and went back home, we had spent maybe six hours together in that five weeks, five plus weeks. And, um, we'd have plans for me to go down. And then there was always some reason for me not to go or, you know, whatever things would change. And it kind of got to the point where like he was canceling or I was canceling. So I'd say it, I was just kind of like, I want more. And, and the, the being with somebody that you want more from and they have no interest in giving it to you is more lonely than just being by yourself. For me anyway, like, I'm okay with my own company, so I don't necessarily have to hang out. And our conversations got like, we would literally just sit there and not talk. 
And when we started, when we first got together, we talked about everything and anything, and you know, and it was exciting. And then it was just, it just fizzled out, which, which makes me feel bad because I, I wanted him to be the one I wanted to be. I wanted us to have that fun, playful relationship with all the things like just totally comfortable and intimate with each other. And I don't mean just the horizontal hanky panky, but the intimacy comes from experiencing things together that it's just between the two of you that not everybody else is included in. And, um, because that's ultimately the kind of relationship I want. I want a fun, playful relationship that you can laugh together. Um, you can get a little rambunctious together and just have, have a good time together and be your totally goofy self. No big deal. And doesn't have to include alcohol. Doesn't have to be, you know, uncomfortable or nervous or like he had his own, um, hangups like we all do. We all do. Uh, and we both decided on new year's was the beginning of both of us trying to lose weight. And I had already started like the week before the, after Christmas kind of cutting back and going back to low carb and paying attention to what I was eating and that kind of thing. And he didn't like the way his body was, but I kind of think because I had literally gained so much weight throughout the course of our relationship. Like I'd gained all the weight I'd lost on keto back. I had started to gain it back. Oh, stretch my legs out a little bit. I'd started to gain it back before he and I started dating. And then it was easy cause he didn't eat keto. It was easy to, you know, get away from it cause we ate and we drank and it was, you know, and it wasn't like we were eating bad stuff all the time. We just ate a significant amount of stuff all the time, either going out to eat or, you know, grilling or cooking something, this, that, or the, you know, recipes, food was a, was something that we shared and the alcohol. And so I think he did have a hang up with his own body, but I think probably I didn't look the way I looked when we first started dating. So they probably wasn't as attracted to me either, which I mean, that's fair. I mean, guys are visual people. So I had, I had gained 30, 40 pounds since we had started dating. So I didn't look like the same person I did when we started dating. So beyond him having his own hangups because he had gained weight since we started dating, I think it, it went both ways. Like he didn't like the way he looked and I don't think he liked the way I looked. He never said that. He never said that. So I'm not, I'm not saying he said that, but I think it was a very real possibility. So word to the wise to anybody out there who's in a relationship. And my best advice is let them do their part. Um, a lot of dating coaches will say, lean back, lean back. You know, it's it, tit for tat kind of, yeah. Let them make an effort, match their energy. That's the best thing. Don't overdo. I read this book and it was called why men love bitches. And it was like legitimately everything I was doing was like, not a bitch, like the anti bitch. Like I was too nice, over giving, over doing, over, 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 over. And that basically got him over the relationship. So yeah, don't do that. Let them take care of you once in a while. Swallow your pride. Say thank you. Be gracious. Let somebody take care of you. I mean, it's, I'm, I've had to be the strong person for so long that I don't know. I don't know how to recognize when somebody else is trying to take care of me until like kicking myself 
after the fact. And I think that's my best advice I can give anybody in a, a relationship type of situation is don't overgive. Don't try to solve all their problems because that turns you, not only are you like in the masculine energy, but you're very much mothering them. If you're trying to make everything easy for them, like, Oh, I'll just drive down. I'll just come and stay with you. That way you don't have to, and you'll be there. And they don't, if they don't have to do anything, they get bored. And I think that's, that's true for all of us. Like I said, with that guy that, um, that guy that I ended up just blocking and deleting that I went out to dinner with once, like he wanted an instant relationship, just like, and the way he talked was, you know, like we were in an instant relationship and I'm, and I'm like, that is that feeling of all that energy coming at you. And if you do that to a guy where you're like, just ready to give them everything and totally dive right in and be all a part of each other's world before they've earned it or you've earned it. It's not, yeah, it's not comfortable. And it's, yeah, you kind of like, whoa, back up, back up. No, no, no. So I think that's, I, th I think that's the best advice I can give anybody. I, um, I did delete all the dating sites and then I did put myself back on, um, Facebook dating basically just to get my face out there a little bit. Um, there's this one guy that, um, like we match on everything, all the zoos can like, he's on all the dating things too. And like, we always end up being a match or being a suggested match or whatever. And I literally talked to him years ago before, I think before Hav and I even got married before Hav and I even started dating. I think I can't remember. His phone, his number is literally still in my phone. And he popped up on Facebook as a match. Like he picked me as a match that he liked me. So I'm like, what the heck? I'll match him back again. <coughs> and then no, no messages. I'm like what? Okay. So we picked each other and then there's no conversation. Well, so finally at the end of Valentine's day, I sent him a happy Valentine's. And a couple of days later, he said, thank you. Or the next day he said, thank you. And then I left it for a day. Like I didn't say anything back. Cause I'm like, okay, are you gonna, so, so finally, like, I think it was yesterday, yesterday or Thursday, I sent a message and I said, so how's your week been going? I'm like, all right, I'm not, I'm not trying to chase this guy, but at least try to have a conversation. And then he says he's just got out of the hospital. He just had surgery and had a, an allergic reaction to something. And I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> and so, well, okay then. And I'm like, well, I hope you get some rest. And I just kind of left it there. And he hasn't said nothing back. I'm like, again, match the energy. If I, if he doesn't say anything back, move on. Just be like, never mind. But I've been rambling on for almost 35 minutes. So anyway, if you have any stories or ideas or comments, please feel free to leave them below. I, um, I like hearing from everybody and, uh, I'll try to think of something to talk about on the next video. So as far as weight loss goes, just kind of hanging steady right now. Haven't, haven't really done a whole lot in that department. Haven't even really made a lot of effort. Still eating keto 99% of the time, but eating too much, eating too late, wasn't drinking any water. So working on the water. And so maybe if I get drinking water, I'll get back on track and I'll have something like that to talk about the next time. So anyway, hope y'all have a great weekend. And if you've stuck through this long, thanks for hanging out with me and I will talk to you again real soon. Bye.